Thank you, Ambassador Faisal, for your most generous comments, which I don't deserve. I hope your relative at the Baghdad High School wrote positive review, although we've never had that system. I don't know whether they have it even now. I, I should have noted, by the way, and I failed to, that you are a published poet in your own right, as well as specializing in modern That's Arabic literature. History. I understand that, but it is a part Stone of your age. history. But it is a part of your history, and I should have noted that, uh, as well as then, when you, were, uh, when you were actively teaching here, having modern Arab Arabic literature as your own academic agenda, and I'm sorry I should have mentioned that. Thank you so much. My wife warned me not to speak more than two or three minutes, a request that is impossible <laughs> to meet, for the simple reason. Rajai and I share few dates in our life and our concerns. The dates I refer to the fact I joined, no, before I joined, <coughs> we were born 1929, both of us, without any intention <laughs> or plan. <laughs> <laughs> we came to IU about the same time. I came 64, he came 65. In 1991, we shared publicly our concern during the infamous Gulf War without any plan. I here in Bloomington, he was at the campus in Kokomo. His writings are superior. In, in the sense, I remember vividly a poem he published 1991, dated February 1991, after the Gulf War, Hulako revisited. I refer to it here in a guest column at HT. And also because Hulako ravaged Baghdad as the Gulf War did. 1994, we both of us retired. But he continued more actively in his pursuit of creative works, memoirs, poems, published, recite, cited, referred to in many publications. I, can, I don't have the time to list, but I would like to say that there have been numerous references citation, commentary on his work, especially the piece related to his memoirs that was published 1981. And many comments refer to it <coughs> as a masterpiece. In one instance, I read a review, if you don't mind, I can quote it, and it is published Wasaila described their expulsion <coughs> in the summer and their long march into the unknown in biblical terms, into the wilderness. Mothers who became delirious and left their babies. Mothers who died while nursing. A strong young man carrying his grandfather on his back like a pack, like a sack of potatoes. <clears throat> a man who took from his wife her gold and left her to <coughs> die. We would pass dead babies or live babies still all the same, <clears throat> abandoned on the side or in ditches. 
as a baby, a baby still alive on the bosom of a dead woman. If only the sun would go away, if only the thirst, if only the gold, I went down again. This time I lay on my back. A woman passed and uttered words of pity as though someone already dead. I got up, <clears throat> ashamed and afraid. This, is, this passage is really published finally in this book at the end of the book, but it was included in his other article that was published in 1981. It's very difficult to say what I should say. I'd like to mention the fact that he has published several works he did not include in his CV. One of them entitled The Ordeal, Poems of Anguish and Resistance, 1977. Another work entitled about the Antifada. Many of these works that he published have been cited throughout the state as well as abroad. I learned from a thesis presented in Malaysia that cited him repeatedly. Other important issue. He supported schools, institutions who served the handicapped in Palestine. And he earned the respect by calling him the spiritual father, Al Abir Ruhi. Now I regret I haven't covered anything that he deserved to be presented, but my time, I think, is over. <laughs> With your permission, I would like to introduce him to speak to you in person directly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <clears throat> I wish to express my thanks, my gratitude to all of you here and to the uh, Center for the Study of the Middle East and for its leader, uh, Ambassador Estrabadi, and for all the staff. I would like to thank the Ambassador for his kind words and for all the the, the unbelievable uh, 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 um, words which uh, <clears throat> which uh, my friend has already showered me with and I surely deserve very little of it. To tell you the truth, <coughs> I have learned more about myself from, <laughs> from, from him than from myself. I have, I have forgotten, I have forgotten most of these, but I have to believe that this is the truth. <laughs> and I am, I am very, very grateful indeed. Um, um, okay. Um, yes, it is true that um, uh, in our studies, uh, we emphasize the political aspect of our living and of, and of our uh, situation. We emphasize it too much, perhaps, or at least we do, we do so at the, at the expense of, uh, uh, of, of the other aspects of, of, of our life. Uh, including literature. Uh, 
uh, I am, I think, I don't want to spend much time because there is a lot to talk about. Um, I, um, <clears throat> my um, my uh, memoir, of course, like 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 most memoirs, I shouldn't say all of them, is uh, is episodic. That is to say, it you know it is. Um, uh, it deals with events, with pictures, with situations, with persons, all of which and all of whom picked from, uh, from life, from my life. It is not, in other words, uh, 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 it is not a structured book, the one I, we're talking about. It is not a structured book. It is a, a, a book of events. Uh, and of people, the way uh, 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 they are seen by the uh, by the narrator of of, of this book. Uh, therefore, there will be literature uh, because of my concerns from the time perhaps I was born. I don't know. My father uh, read to me all the time, uh, and so. Uh, I got interested from early times uh, in literature, in poetry, and in the Quran, of course. And so there will be uh, 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 some literature in this book. However, uh, nobody's life is made up completely of one thing only, even of literature, uh, uh, because literature is art and life is life. And I think they imitate each other, but they are also d different. Um, so, to, uh, uh, I am taking the events and personalities and situations from my life as a child and uh, some of which I will relate to literature, that is to say, to poetry. I have uh, been writing poetry all along, and so there will be, uh, I will hope to, uh, to, to present the relationship uh, between uh, 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 certain events or certain people, uh, between that and poetry. Uh, but let me make a couple of remarks first to, to protect, to clarify things. Um, the, uh, my book, the memoir, is written in the, with the style of the child and with his style as he grows into boyhood. At least I try my best to do so. I try to make <clears throat> the child and then the boy speak rather than the adult person speak. And so the style will, will change just as the child will change. Uh, as I say, this I have been successful to an extent but not completely, completely. This is one point is really we should uh, uh, be very careful about uh, uh, when reading uh, uh, this book. Okay, um, there's another point which is almost digressive, but it should be mentioned because uh, <coughs> it was mentioned in, in the introductions. Uh, and. Uh, my description of the march from Lida in 1948 was uh, published in the Arab Studies Quarterly in 1981. Um, um, it was mentioned, it was in a chapter which I called uh, Reminiscences and Impressions. 
And this chapter or this article was uh, included in this book, in, in, in the present book. It was included in it uh, as the, the end, in the last chapter, chapter uh, 8, and with chapter uh, 7 as a prelude to. <coughs> so uh, it, it, it is included in it. Now, okay. um, now to, the, uh, to the book itself, um, there is, again, what, what may be unique or partially unique or to an extent unique about this book is this point which I consider important. I don't know how others would, but then that, that's, that's another thing. Uh, this uh, is, this uniqueness lies in the fact that uh, the book has been writ written first in exile, uh, in exile, and second, it is written about uh, life which was lo a long time ago, and it was in a far remote place. That is to say, it was about, the, 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 the book deals with a completely different culture, completely different culture because of the remoteness of time it was and because of the remoteness, remoteness of place it took, it took place in. Uh, this, I think, it ought to make it, the book interesting in that respect, but also it really, it has been very difficult to write because I'm writing in exile and I have lived in this country much more than half of my life than in, in the country and the times I'm writing about. I came to this country in 19... 1957, uh, so, but still I'm writing about times long time ago and places far away from here. That makes, uh, that creates a, the problem, especially since, as I said, we are writing in the style and in the perception of a child growing into a boy. It makes things very difficult. I mean, no, of course, you know, it's the adult who is trying to remember what the child was like and what he said and what he did. Uh, yeah. Now, that, um, um, it, 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 it makes things difficult. Who am I speaking to? Am I speaking to the people among whom the child grew up until 1948? Or am I speaking to the people I have lived with since 1957? So there is a person with, I don't know, a tongue split in two or with two tongues trying to, uh, 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 to, to, to address this such a situation. Very, pretty difficult. But um, the, this is how it is. Now, in the book, uh, in, in this book, uh, as I said, there will be, there will be poems, a couple of, well, few poems, three, four maybe, uh, which will, uh, uh, which will, um, uh, 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 exhibit the relationship between the concrete, the, the physical uh, uh, um, event or story or incident and the, uh, 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 its uh, change into, into a, uh, a work of art. Uh, 
this is what we will do now. Um, oh, okay. The book also um, The book also, <coughs> uh, as I said at the beginning, is, uh, is episodic. So it doesn't have uh, much of a coherent structure. Of, uh, yes, it doesn't have much of this. And yet there are, there are themes, there are themes which uh, occur, recur in the uh, in, <coughs> in the narrative uh, the blindness of the child is predominant <coughs> and it's it, it it is in the book from beginning to end and the uh, <coughs> the education of the child is another theme or topic which is, is stays all the way with the book, and then there is um, the, the the specific or the special situation of the child in which he grew up, and that is the the state of <coughs> apprehension psychologically, psychologically and physically, really apprehension that something is going to happen that there is a menace uh, threatening uh, threatening the, uh, the 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 country and the the mind and the life of the child and that is the 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 uh, foreigners who were getting into the country under the supervision of an occupier uh, a country, Palestine, in the 30s and the 40s was a, a British colony and Palestine <coughs> was uh, also uh, uh, opened by the British, naturally by force, to the uh, immigrants, so-called immigrants of Jewish people from Europe and really from all over the world, but mostly perhaps from 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 Europe. Uh, now, uh, my people, the adult people I lived with, were talking about this all the time. They're talking about their fears that this country was in danger, that this country was going to be taken away and we, I, the child hears it, and the child thinks about it, and sometimes he is afraid, sometimes he is defiant, um, but it proves that the menace was uh, 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 real, and that the apprehension, the state of apprehension, was justifiable, if only because of what happened in, in 19... 48, that is to say, the British, the occupier, uh, opened the gates, opened the flood of, of the Zionists among the Jews who took the country and expelled its people, that is to say, ethnically cleansed it uh, from its three quarters of the of the of the indigenous people, of the Palestinian people, were uh, thrown out, and the, the child, who, the blind child, who is now a boy, uh, is thrown out among them, and he is among those who were cleansed. 
So, uh, the, 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 these are the, uh, the well, say, say, say the the general uh, the general uh, facts and the the general circumstances. Now, uh, the boy or the child has, as we said, uh, several uh, problems, perhaps different a little bit. Uh, among which, or a ma major among which, is his blindness. Uh, uh, he was born, I'm talking about myself, but, but the child was born uh, uh, sighted, and at the age of eight months, he lost his sight. And in the book, there is a description of how he lost his sight, at least according to his mother and according to his father. And mother and father don't agree, of course, and many times parents don't agree among themselves. I think we are familiar with this theme. So, so, but I don't need to go into this because this is the book. And we, but there is a, uh, the mother believes in superstition and, and the father who tries to understand the medical uh, 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 business of it as best he can, uh, but neither of them really achieves complete, uh, 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 complete uh, 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 understanding. <coughs> well, with superstition, you don't understand anyway. But, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, the blood, uh, this causes the parents a great deal, a great deal of, uh, of pain and anguish, uh, the, the bloodness of their firstborn and boy and all that, so much so that um, they, they have to listen to, to many people um, um, giving them advice. Some people telling them, Go ahead and have more, more more babies. Maybe you will have another boy to replace this blind child. And some of them would tell him, would tell my parents, well, oh, why don't you get rid of him? Smother him with a with a with a pillow, and uh, you know, let him go. Uh, so so it goes. But then, as the as the child grows up, and as the child. Uh, begins to understand, he is uh, introduced to a new thing, psychological. That to be blind, to be blind according to superstition or according to tradition at least, to be, to be blind would, is, either, is either the result of being cursed by God or of being blessed by God, depending. And the child is, is confused uh, always, is he blessed or is he, or is he cursed? Uh, and this goes on for, uh, you know, all his life. Actually, it's, well, I don't believe in it now, whether I am cursed or blessed, but uh, when I was a child, I, I, I sure, uh, had had trouble with this, and I uh, would like. Uh, I don't think we have. Uh, do we have any passages from the? Uh, about the. Yeah. No, no, not because. Okay. So, but the uh, he the child is is. Uh, Teased by sighted boys, he is teased even by his sisters, and he hears things about his blindness and so on. Uh, it's in the book. I, uh, unfortunately, we can't read everything. But here is a poem uh, I would like to read to you, and maybe I'll make comments a little bit about this phenomenon, the phenomenon of, of blindness. Now, uh, his parents used to joke with him when he was still a child, yeah? That, oh, you know, you are not our, 
you're not our son, you're not our child. Uh, we found you in a ditch and your parents were uh, uneducated and uh, this and that and all that. And so the child is confused. And here is, here is a poem which is based on this fact, yeah, on the fact that uh, uh, the children t told him uh, you can see and his parents told him you are not our child and his sisters well you will see let me read the poem and see if it makes sense uh, yeah so when because and therefore that you know logic when because and therefore looked much like identical twins now in quotes you are not our son we picked you up from the ditch your father wears large shoes and a large hat. No, no, you are not our son. And the nun son cries, and the nun father and nun mother laughs. And the more laughter, the more tears. And the more tears and more laughter. And the boys laugh and say, he has no eyes. And when alone, he touches his face. And yes, he has eyes. And he wears no hat. <coughs> and his shoes, his shoes are small, much smaller than the shoes his not father wears. But like his sisters, the boys do not have to learn by heart the words of the holy book. And they are not found in any ditches. And nobody beats them for not learning by heart those crazy words of the holy book as his not father beats him and when he does not beat him he says you are no good all you will do for a living is to recite the Quran at the cemetery for a hard boiled egg and a piece of bread and that is all this however pleases the not son because he likes bread and hard boiled eggs <laughs> it makes his not mother quiet and sad and his sisters laugh and say he does not know yet how to eat he carries the food on the spoon held upside down and they laugh like the boys and the not father says nothing and for a long time long time he is quiet and the not mother sobs and sobs quietly alone in the corner reason has not learned yet the art of flowing from because to therefore. Is tears, the boy asks himself, is tears the cause of laughter or is laughter the cause of tears? The Quran was his problem because, I'm done with the part, the Quran was his problem because he had to learn it by heart without explaining to him any of its meaning whatsoever. And if he didn't do it, his father was upset, his father was this and this, and sometimes he beat him. Uh, so, there is a great deal of this theme in the book, the theme of blindness. Uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately, we can't uh, 
you know, go through through the whole thing. Uh, now, uh, uh, I would like to go to some other themes in the book, so that since time is running out, I think. Um, um, I'm writing, I, I have, I'm writing a book of poems, by the way, about, about this memoir, about this life. And uh, I divide the book into some, something like, like five stages. The first stage is when everything was uh, nice and easy and happy and joyful. And the second is when he begins to suffer from uh, 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 learning the Quran by heart and being beaten. And the third is when, when he is, when he begins apprehensive, when he begins to feel that there is something dangerous coming. And the fourth is the, the, the climax, the destruction and the expulsion of the people from their country, from their homes. And, and the fifth is some sort of a commentary uh, on the whole thing. You know, so here is a poem in which I, at least I believe, a poem which uh, attempts to describe happiness. Uh, of, now, it is based on no events, but it is based on the happy atmosphere itself, which is when the child is very, very young, of course. Baby bounces breathless on her belly and fills his with her milk warm like the mid-June sun. His heart pounding like a pioneer's towards the infinite. Baby lets fall his head in the consonance of her bosom, giggles forth his exhaustion and still defiant sparkles vowels in the teeth of sleep. They flow beyond consciousness like the yield <coughs> of her breasts, those feminine ends which ripple forth possibilities towards time's last syllable, if there is one. Uh, I call this poem Beyond. Um, the child does not know time. Child does not know beginning, nor does child know, know, does he know end. So it is an infinity, really, as far as the, the uh, comprehension and the consciousness of the child. And that's what the poem tries to, to, to explain. The child is not yet aware the child is not yet aware of what is going to happen. This is the, the first stage. Um, um, another uh, 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 poem which is uh, connected with the uh, concrete and physical incidents in this book is this. And now uh, before I read it, I would like to read to you, at least my wife will read, I hope, uh, will, will, will read to you the, the incident on which the poem is based. And you will see how the poem carries on and far away from the uh, from the real historical accident or incident. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, read the uh, the rhyme. Yeah. That's uh, okay. Yeah. So so um, this is now she is going to read to you the origin 
of this poem in a way, we, or at least the incident which becomes the origin of the poem which I will read after you hear what, how it happened uh, uh, physically. Go ahead. Please. Yeah. In the barn, there was another smell, very dominant, very aggressive. I like to enter the barn alone mostly, to go to the owner of that smell. He does not speak, his smell does, and it leads me directly to him. There he is, sitting on his couch of dung, large and bulky, his wool thick, coarse and shaggy. And there they are, his broad, thick, long pointed horns. I take hold of them. I shake them repeatedly. He does not move. He does not utter a sound. I do this over and over without result. Well then, I take hold of his horns and firmly and jump. Immediately he springs and bolts upright. And before I know it, I am down on the cushion of dirt and dung. When Imram hears this, he said that I was as good as the taste himself, as dumb as the ram. This is what happened to me. See? <laughs> oh, really? And, uh, uh, I am here still alive to tell you the story. <laughs> and not only that, but to write this poem about, about it. And you will see the difference now, of course, now the poem is not the child, the child's poem. It is somebody who came to to the West and learned so much about the West and its myths and legends and what have you. And so here is the poem. To breathe the image of a heifer and then move back a step or two in order to look at the creation only to stop realizing it says more than you said does differently from how you do points with the head in directions you apprehend a little more than does the spark its offspring of fires and fires it further carries in the eyes shapings of that far away which float only into the ken of the Olympian bull whom the child once surprised dozing leapt thoughtlessly on his back took him by the golden horn and lo the shock of ignition <coughs> it bellowed the earth out of breath, it dazzled the sky's eyes. Uh, 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 excuse me, uh, I hope I don't, uh, I mean, I respect naturally uh, my audience and sincerely too, but what I am trying to do is that I am comparing my experience when, when a child with the experience I learned later when Zeus when Zeus, the Greek, the Greek god, uh, uh, took hold of Europa and took her and, of course, raped her, and well, what happened after the rape of 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 of, uh, of, of Lida? All the violence, which started then with the Trojan Wars and which continues well into these days, into this country even. And, but this poem uh, uh, is based on the innocent experience of somebody who is a little bit crazy a child. So, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, um, oh well. <coughs> Um, now, with the Quran, as I said, you know, we, the, the Muslims, I don't know, they still do it, I think, uh, really, they memorize the Quran and they hardly understand it. Uh, 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 and uh, 
they don't, you know. And unfortunately, illiteracy is, is, is still rampant. Uh, I know in the countries I visit, illiteracy is uh, terrible and painful. And uh, I bet elsewhere. And so the Quran becomes a, 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 a thorn instead of becoming a blessing. I take a, a very small, very small chunk of all this, and I write this little poem about illiteracy among us Muslims. Uh, I am a Muslim too. If our prophet did not know all, and who but the Creator knows all, still he knew so much that he did not mind the bestowal of illiteracy upon him. And that so excited the moon, she shone full bright at midday. The Prophet's illiteracy is, in other words, something different from ours. We who uphold the faith today, and that's what the Prophet did not know, we know so little that we believe it is a heavenly virtue to be illiterate taking our unknowing to be the prophets. And that so embarrasses the son, he pales and takes up the veil. It's a, it's a very sad situation, of course, but, <coughs> well, that, that, that's how, that's how at least I see it. <clears throat> um, now, uh, as I said at the beginning, that the, 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 the child is growing and there is, uh, 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 upon his consciousness, uh, 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 religion, and now we want to move to another phase or, or stage. And that is the third stage, shall we call it, the, the stage of apprehension. The, the child be, be, is, is, is growing and now he is, he is worried about he is worried about what may happen. And uh, I write a short poem here about this, about how how uh, uh, precarious the situation of the children and the adults is there. And I call it to the lemon. The lemon is going to be the, the lemon is going to be the, uh, the, demonstration of how precarious the situation is. So keen you sting wild the sea, your neighbor, and shake his white beard big with little pride. So sharp you set on edge the teeth and buds of a whole generation. Look how, you know, the, the lemon is so tart, right? It makes you pucker and all that. So seductive, your breath born on the wind, it almost alters heaven's chemistry. Yet, as though to prove you remain central among the community of beings, if the North, if your enemy the North, if the North had its way as it sometimes does, you stand as much a chance 
as a baby orphan might, and we might have guessed as much had we but had the sense to heed you blossoms. You know, when the wind sometimes is strong and the blossoms are just all, all blown away, right? And so this is how precarious our situation is. Okay, now um, I have, okay, <clears throat> we have for now, yeah. I have also written another poem, or at least really several, uh, uh, about the precariousness of the situation and the, uh, and the apprehension <coughs> or the state of apprehensiveness. Uh, and this, is, this time it is based on a specific fact, just like the fact of the, of the rhyme and the book and she will, my wife will read it, will read the, the physical fact, and then you will see what the poem, how the poem uh, tries to express this state of apprehension. Go ahead. My sister and other children would pick flowers in the field, violets and red hats especially. They would chase the butterfly, the grasshopper, the prophet's mare, and Il Miss Le Mans, which did not smell good. I wanted to touch the prophet's mare, but could not. I often wondered how one insect could be a mare for the prophet, and another the mother of Sleeman. I would mostly listen to the wheat in the wind. I discovered early the pleasure of listening to the wind blowing through plants and trees. Sometimes I could hear it coming from afar, touching one tree after another until it reached me and then passed me to other trees. Just like the waves I was soon to discover, coming one after the other with their soft hissing sound as they dissolved under my feet. In Miss Lemaire, is the colloquial name for an insect. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but this is what the children called it in Muslimat. <laughs> and the prophet's mare, Faras in Nabi, Faras in Nabi, that's another one, another insect, and they used to go after them. Uh, you know, it was, uh, but now I take this, this happy scene, this happy scene, and uh, the child is, as I said, is growing and his, apprehens his apprehensions are growing with him too. And here is the, 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 the poem. I call it for now as Jerusalem edged toward the brink, the brink of, of, of being conquered and destroyed. For now, the foliage and the rough playing wind muffle their high voices among the violets, an assembly in euphoria, the riot in their blood and the spirit in their feet. They spring higher than the aspiring wheat, they shout in its yet unformed ears, phrases brief and phrases drawn out, property to all owned by none. They pant their breath of lilac in a reflective sun after their rising shadows, after birds of sparse humor, after sky not out of dreams reach to be quickened by the wings of a Muslim man, grasshopper and butterfly, and the prophet's agile 
Yet, as happy as they may be, the afternoon already leans on an incline, a bit irritable, irritable in the sides. As merry as they may make the air, the hills about them seem to know too much and keep still. For now, the grass is barely above its birth, its, ar <coughs> its ardor, though held in check, far outweighs its age. For now, the foliage and the wind at play absorb their voices as luxuriant wool absorbs the tinklings of a throng of bells. Uh, you know, they're happy, enjoy yourself for now, but the, after, the day is almost over. The, you know, it's, the day is on an incline, and those hills, I don't know, they seem to know something, but they don't tell the kids what it is yet. Uh, that, 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 that's what the what I'm trying to to uh, articulate. Uh, you know. Yeah. Now you have the education, right? Yeah, the education. Okay. Now before I move on to the fourth stage, there is the theme. Uh, uh, we talked about the theme of the Quran and the theme of religion. Uh, we need to say a little bit about uh, uh, the child's education. Uh, uh, this I can't describe here because it is long uh, and education be begins when I, am, when I have consciousness and it ends when I graduate from high school. The British helped me, they were in control. They made me learn and they gave me a matriculation certificate and of course they took away my country. I had to pay with my country for the certificate they gave me, thanks to them. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I was educated first, I was sent to a kutab where a, an old woman taught me the Quran and then I was sent to a, a school for orphans where I learned more Quran and broom making and brush making. And then I was sent to a, a, a public school, but for the blind only. Uh, it was a good beginning. Um, but then uh, the description I want to, would like my wife to read, is a description when I succeeded in getting accepted into public school with the sighted. I so envied the sighted, their freedom and their vast expanse. I wanted to be like them, not knowing, of course, not knowing, not uh, accepting my limitations. And when I was accepted among them, and that was into high school, uh, I was really happy. And to tell you the truth, the, the happiest years of my life, and I tell you mine has been a long life, I think uh, you've heard something about that, uh, the, the happiest years of my life are the four years in high school uh, in, with the site. Here is my wife reading a passage which describes, which <laughs> describes how, what happened, how I felt when I was admitted into the freshman class of public high school. Yeah. Yes. So one day in September, I found myself at my new school in a classroom full of the voices of boys. I could tell that the boys were looking at the newcomer 
the blind student. They looked and whispered with excitement, a promising excitement. For a while, I could sense that I was the object of the student's eyes. While I noted with my other senses, their voices and speech. I could feel that I was in a new world, wide, rich, ready to be explored. It was strange and wonderful, like a dream. I was experiencing something similar to what I had experienced when I was little. When I was introduced to the sea for the first time, announcing a vastness, endless and tempting. The class was a new world, a sea, and I was ready to plunge into it. My blindness was temporarily forgotten. It was no insurmountable obstacle. Mr. Khaldi's fears were unfounded. I was determined to make it. I was already making it. Uh, uh, Dr. Saleh tells me that uh, time is out and there is a great deal to say, but luckily, luckily, he, at the beginning, he talked about a little bit about the fifth stage and the about, that is to say, the destruction and the cleansing uh, of the country of its people. Uh, so I will not be able to talk about it. I may, I may try to uh, 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 sneak in a little poem later, if he allows me. But you are free, but, but, but you can go on but to the he said, floor. But all right, all right. But he wants you to ask questions. He wants you to ask questions. And please don't ask me embarrassing ones. <laughs> Well, first of all, I think we should all thank Professor Rajai, uh, Rajai Busaila for really a marvelous presentation. Please join in doing so. Yes. Uh, yes, well, first off, it's a great pleasure to be in the presence of uh, such a refined 89-year-old uh, person. It's, uh, I think in India they call it darshan. Um, I was doing some mathematics, and you were born in 1929. These uh, incidents were in 1948, so you were 19. How old were you when you wrote the book? When I wrote the book? Yes. Oh, I wrote it very recently. I finished oh, really? it. Oh, really? Oh, yes. That's astounding. I finished it some four years ago, and then I had big trouble and arguments and what have you with my editor. <laughs> it took four years before she let it out. <laughs> but the book was finished four years ago. Uh, oh, in other words, you are telling me that my memory is... Uh, how do I remember all this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I tried writing a book, and... Uh, it was just 40 years afterwards, and gee, <laughs> trying to put it together is extremely difficult. And you were talking very subtly about the smells and, uh, you know, the sound. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll have to listen now to trees and how the wind first hits one tree and then another and another and then goes past me. It's something I'd never even uh, thought about. So anyway, I very much appreciate that, and uh, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, amazed at your recall. Well, there are now, poets, sir, and then there are the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were at a school for the blind. They were teaching to make brushes and brooms, but then opportunity opened for you to move to the school, the yes. public school. Well, the side of it. So can you talk about what intervened at that point to move you from a place of low expectations, putting you on a path to nowhere, to opening up this opportunity for you? Uh, well, uh, blame it on Dr. Sala, because he, <laughs> he reminded me of the time. And, but after the, the school for orphans, where I, where I uh, um, learned how to 
make brushes and brooms. I was admitted to a school, public school, for the blind only though. Mm -hmm. And this is where they taught me uh, some history, some, well, uh, lots of history, and lots of geography, and they taught me Braille, uh, of course, but I stayed there five years. And the, when I, at the end of the fifth year, that is to say, the end of junior high school, something like this, was over for me. And now, I wanted to go to high school, which meant I had to be with the sighted. And there was objection from the administrators. And remember, administrators are always a problem, really, wherever they go. <laughs> but anyway, with all due respect to those who are good ones. Um, and so they opposed it. And my father was stubborn. And that's what he taught me to be, actually. Uh, so he insisted and argued and went here and went there until I was admitted to high school on one condition, that I should be kicked out of that high school three months later if I don't prove that I could do it. You proved it. Well, thank God. I, I, I was lucky in a way, but yes. Uh, Professor Busayla, can you link those feelings and experiences in the land of Palestine to the later events that happened to the people and, and the land? Of course, but uh, I, as I said, I didn't have, uh, we didn't have time. Yeah. This is what stopped me, but the, the, uh, the, the stage, you know, the fifth stage. I do have uh, quite a few poems about that too. Uh, so uh, 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 I will read one poem to which uh, uh, Dr. Tama referred. He referred to it in the incident, uh, and that is when we were uh, expelled and we were marching. Um, uh, uh, I call it uh, <clears throat> remembering after 40 years in the wilderness. This is a description uh, of uh, our expulsion. Do you have it? Um, or do, yes. Do, do, do I do that? Remembering after 40 years. This, yes. Okay. This is what I wrote in, 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 in chapter 8 about it. Let her read it and then I will read you the, the, the little poem I wrote. The mammoth beast raved on, awkward and clumsy as it moved forward. We were a host of atoms in rising heat, united by discord and trauma. I began to hear of new things. I would pass people lying on the ground resting in the heat without shade. I would hear them talking of the old father or grandfather left behind because he was unable to continue and they could not wait. Farther upward, eastward, people said they would pass bodies that might have been without life. Some would throw a cover on a woman's body. We would pass dead babies and live babies all the same, abandoned on the side or in ditches. I was made aware, slowly, piecemeal, through exclamations or incoherent phrases, that some who lay dead had their tongues sticking out, covered with dust. I did not see, and that perhaps frightened me the more. Would I make it, I wondered. Later. I think when we reached what turned out to be our destination, the village of Nileen, someone talked of having seen a baby still alive on the bosom of a dead woman, apparently the mother. I thought to myself that if I had known, I would have carried the baby instead of the gold. Later, I heard about a Der Yassin mother 
seen in Jerusalem with her killed baby on her bosom. Now this is very similar to the uh, reading of Dr. Tom. Now, I don't know if I should read the poem or uh, maybe we don't. Yes, I think we can. Yeah. Always like different hearing the poem written by the poet himself. Always different. Please do. Well, okay. Uh, remembering after 40 years in the wilderness, the 40 years of wandering of the Jews, of course, and this is the irony of the Jews who were wandering who, under the leadership of Moses, right? Mm -hmm. 40 years. So here is what I do. Over Europe, there hung a strange mist. America was still feigning innocence. Of course, today they prefer faking to feigning <laughs> innocence. <laughs> And God was ordering that there be light at that time. And when there was, there was paraded on the road from Lida to Ni'lin, as the wind played possum, a pair of dead breasts and a baby, his face buried between them waiting to be nursed. The July sun was pitiless then, citing and reciting the incident, they called it an incident, when God that spring went merciful and ordered that there be light. And when there was, why there was paraded from there you see in the breath of the orange blossom, in the view of God's city, a baby lying on his tummy, dead <coughs> between two breasts which yearned to nurse. Um, well, I felt if there are questions or I, I, yeah, there are questions. Yes. Know. Yes. May I in may I invite you to move from these very moving uh, personal recollections with all kinds of political implications into giving us your insight and your wisdom on what would be the most just and compassionate way forward at the present time? Well, uh, as I was, you know, if you remember, I was introduced as a person whose interest is art and literature and whose knowledge about politics is kind of limited. However, I mean, I do have opinions like everybody else, I guess, for all their worth. Um, um, we have to uh, appeal, frankly, to the consciences of people, not to the designs and vagaries, if you like, of politicians. Uh, politicians uh, do not solve a problem like the one we have. Because our problem is now, uh, it, 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 it is, uh, what shall I say, it is deeper, it is deeper than the playings of politics. It began with politics, yes, but now it is a question of people to people. What you have I mean, in, in, in Palestine, you have a people who have been treated uh, ex just as the Red Indians were treated, uh, just as the blacks in Australia were treated.